Hi, I'm Bailey with Two Way Mirrors. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to cut a trapezoid. First off, I like to start by visualizing the trapezoid on a piece of paper. And um, these are just basic random measurements that I put on so that it's easily understandable for whoever's learning to cut a trapezoid out of glass. In this video, we're gonna be using the, our material that, of my choice. It's easy to write on because there's a laminate on top. This is glass for a surface, quarter inch. Uh, you cut the height on a Fletcher. Well, that's how I do it. And um, I like to measure from a stock edge because I know that's 100% true flat. And on this piece from stock edge to stock edge it's 32 inches long. And I like to find about the middle point of the piece of glass or an inch or two longer than um, say 24 inches. I'm going to want at least an inch or two from the edge, each edge so that when you cut your diagonal, it doesn't end on a corner. Because if it ends on a corner, it's not gonna uh, have a nice point and it's not gonna be the exact measurement of what you wanna get. So I'm gonna start off by marking the center point, which I'm gonna be using 16. And then looking at the example above, I know on the top side, I have to move over eight and then at the mark. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on 24. You want to you want to mark a little line so that your score wheel can sit just right on top of it, not a super big line, not like this or like this. You want like that. Very small, precise. And then, okay, we're going to move back over to the center line. And I like to count it out because you can get confused very easily. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I also like to put my finger by the measuring tape and on top of it so that it's pulled right down to the edge of the glass. Now we're going to move down to the bottom. And we're going to mark 16 again. So we know when we look at the piece after we have it cut, we can visually look at it and we can see if it's off or not. A lot of the times if you don't know where your middle point's at and you're looking at a trapezoid, you might think it's right or both sides are, um, are even, but it's, sometimes it's not and you'll have a customer complain. Okay, we're going to move over 12 just like our diagram up here, 12 inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right at 28. That one's a big line, but it's okay. Okay, we're gonna move 12, we're gonna move back to the center line, and then we're gonna move 12 inches to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Right on four. Now is where uh, you can see that your lines that you've uh, made on the piece of glass aren't on the edge and that's where you want them to be. So we're gonna take a straight edge and we're gonna connect them to the edge. So basically, you just put the straight edge, you put some force underneath, and you try to make the line right on top of the other. Sorry, the Sharpie goes out sometimes on this laminate. There you go, right to the edge. It's pretty close. Now we're gonna move over and we're gonna repeat that step three more times.
Now I imagine there's several ways to get a trapezoid. This is the one way that I use that gets me to my final product most accurately. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but it always works. Um, now we have to set up for cutting the piece. Sometimes if it's out of three mil or two mil, maybe one mil, and it's a super thin, fragile glass, um, you're gonna want a weight on one end or maybe a supporting glass underneath when you hang it off the table. There's not a lot of um, straight edges that have suction cups. That's um, our bigger straight edges. They have suction cups that suction to the glass. So you can line up your scroll rail easily and it's easy to move around. But when you have a small piece like this and you have to cut it by hand, um, it's hard to get a straight edge that fits in a spot this small with two suction cups and is even. So we use a straight edge or ruler, whatever you want to call it. And this one's pretty thick and that's nice for our application, our application because our score wheel, it helps keep it straight if we push it up against this. So as long as we set it right, it helps us have a guide and it makes it easier. So when we're placing the straight edge, I like to get it in the middle. Luckily with ours, we have this center cut that allows us to see where the middle is pretty easily. But how I like to lightly set it up is I put the ruler on the inside of the actual piece that we want. This is the piece that's gonna be cut off. As an example, the black shaded out area is this area right here. Um, I like to set it up so that it's like, it's kind of close. It's not really an exact science. You kind of just eyeball it and hope maybe. You put it right on and sometimes it's not and sometimes it is. We uh, use these clamps. Um, they're small little clamps. You can get them from Home Depot or Lowe's. I like to clamp it down like this because it's easier to attach. I do like one little squeeze, so it's still movable if you knock it, but it's kind of locked down a little bit to that area. So when you're adjusting one side, the other side doesn't move all the way over here and you're just going back and forth. Um, I personally like to get my eye and my head level right so I can see where the score wheel is hitting. I like to get the score wheel to be right on the line, right on the edge of the glass. So right when you get it about there, you squeeze it a couple more times so that it's more tight. And then you rotate to the other side and you repeat the process. Sorry. I like to, uh, I like knock it. I don't really pull it because I don't want it to like dig deep into like the glass or scratch. It's just a light knock here or there on either side. Okay, that looks good. Well, since I moved this side, this side, if it wasn't locked down completely, it will move. So I like to double confirm without moving at all either side if it's right on or not. So I come back for the confirmation. Oh, that looks good. We don't have any movement. And on this side, it looks about good. Yeah, that looks great. Right on the money. So now, when I'm hand cutting, I like to make sure that I use oil. Um, sometimes it's hard to have, uh, like when you're scoring, it's hard to have continuous pressure, the same amount of pressure from here all the way to there, especially if you have to move. So sometimes you might press a little bit harder and you might not press as much. And if you press a little bit harder without oil, Sometimes it leads to more chipping. So it's just kind of like a step that I like to do just so that when I spend all this time trying to get a trapezoid, that it's not wasted time. And you know, a simple step with putting some oil could help you um, have your piece have a better finish or have a better edge 
than someone who maybe didn't use oil. So I just use it just to be safe. I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I like to start as close to the edge as I can and then I'll use my finger to support my score wheel. So push down, listen for the scores in the glass. It's the right pressure. Perfect, and that little, when I go off the edge and it does that little boom, it's actually scraping the outside of the piece, not the physical piece, and that's also why I put the ruler on the piece, not on the outside when I cut it. You can do it either way, but that's why we do it that way. Now, I'm taking our breakers. You adjust the breakers by this nut right here. So basically, I like to wipe the oil off so this doesn't slip around and I can see the line clearly that I just scored. I like to put the line all the way on and say the, the end of this line right here is at the end of the glass. And you twist the bolt right till it stops, mine stopped, and then you twist it left two rotations. And then now, if it's a bigger piece, you have someone hold it, but if it's a smaller piece like this, you just make sure it's hanging off the edge of the table, and then you squeeze, and there you go. Now looking at the diagram again, back to the diagram, this shaded off piece is this piece. And now you can start to get a visual of how the piece is going to turn out and look like a trapezoid. Now what we have to do is we have to flip this around. And when you're pulling the piece off the edge, I like to personally have a few inches off the table behind one of the lines. One line is always going to be a little bit closer to the table than the other one is. And then once I get it in a good relative spot, I like to put one, of, one side of the weight off the table, and, I mean on the table and one part of the weight on the glass. Um, we put felt on our weights so that, say if this glass did not have any laminate, uh, when we are cutting these, it wouldn't scratch the surface. Um, that's what makes this difficult is that a lot of the times you might be using a glass that you can see through and when you get a break, in a sense, kind of like that, that's above the surface, that means we took a little bit of what was into the trapezoid. And when that happens, say in a glass two-way piece, you're gonna be able to see that. And that's what makes it difficult when you're doing um, pieces that are using glass or cutting glass that you can see through. So now we're gonna, Set this back up like the other side. We're one cut away. Hopefully it goes smoothly and we can uh, call this piece of trapezoid. And the reason why I do it like this is because I can push on the bottom and then push it straight down. If you do it the opposite way, I've found that it kind of it's just super, a lot more inconvenient. Like, I can't really adjust down here. I can adjust e in easily up here. And especially when it comes to like, say you tighten down the piece, and or the, the ruler, and you, you actually need to adjust it again. It's, a, it's so much easier to do a light little let go, move it, and then clamp it right back down, and it won't go anywhere. Okay, so now we're gonna line up the straight edge again. Ooh, look at that, right there. That's how you know you've done it for a while.
confirmation. Okay, looks good. Don't want to get all the way here and just speed through to mess up. All right, clamp them down to be 100%. Use our oil. And that's not like engine oil. Um, it's like specific glass cutting oil, if you were wondering. Um, I didn't know that there was specific oil for glass cutting when I started cutting glass, so, you know. Just want to educate. Okay, three, two, one. There we go. Make sure the edge is off the, off the table. Okay, I'm gonna break it now. Three, two, one. There we go. That's a lot cleaner of a break. And a lot of the time when it comes to breaking, you know, Depends if your uh, your breakers have like this rubber coating. If it's like broken like this, but like in the corner, because that's where most of the pressure gets put on the glass is in the corners. Um, when those poke through, that's how you can just snap the glass or you get like worse breaks. But then also if your score wheel um, has imperfections in it, it won't score the glass correctly. And then when you go to break it, it won't break straight or correctly either. So those are two problems that you could have that could be, um, you might think it's you or you're just not good at it. You know, maybe you want to try a, a different score, score wheel and you could have an end product like this. Put it right on the corner. So the top should be 16. And if you look at that, it's right on 16, maybe a 64th off, maybe. Sometimes uh, when you're measuring from these corners, it's hard because if you know with the measuring tape, it moves in and out right there. And if you, you can't, it's hard to get a solid grabbing point. And on this last bottom side, it's not even a 64th off of 24. So in my opinion, we did a really good job because at Two-way mirrors, we work within a millimeter and a half, and that's well under a millimeter and a half. So if this was an order, we would uh, have succeeded. All we have to do from now is sand the sides, just like a regular piece of glass, um, and then maybe flatten a part or two, like maybe this corner, we would flatten that out continuous with the edge. and. Um, Really, after that, nothing much else. Uh, we got some good breaks today, and um, hopefully you guys learned how to cut a trapezoid. <laughs>